Now that you found an inspiration of your branding color, you already know what color you, you are going to use. Mine was orange and uh, it is time to create a color palette. And we are going to use Figma to create an effective color branding. Uh, there is other software outside there that you can use that include Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Uh, today I'll be using Figma. It's one of my favorite and the, the tool that I'm still learning and still building my skill upon it. So uh, this video is uh, an addition of another video that I did on uh, finding color inspiration and we're going to dive deep into Figma I will show you how I do it, how I created mine that is the color that I'm using for branding of the talking dev and from there I will share more with you Now that you found your base color you know already what color you want to work with the next step is to get into Figma and start dialing down your color and creating that color palette for your project. Now, before we go there, I want to add an extra step that I did after I found my color because uh, sometimes it will not be easy to simply go to Figma and start putting down those color palettes just direct like that. So I will iterate the same step that I did in the video that I did on inspiration. So that specific step is what we are going to follow here. And uh, luckily we have Google on our side. So we are going to search for color palette. I've already fired my Chrome. So here it is. Uh, you type orange color palette. And uh, for me, I went down uh, up to page two. You can see this was page one. Page one, I didn't find anything important. So the first few things that I was getting is from whatever I already know and um, I've been using that color hunt. We have Pinterest and all the all, all the rest. None of these came into what I was looking for. So uh, the second page, that's where I found exactly what I was looking for. So I got uh, to this website it's called ofeo.com that's exactly where i found that color palette that i'm going to use in this video i'll open it so let's go to the website uh, just open the website so i'm here so this website it's beautiful and uh, they have the article was well put and it's also up to date it was published on 21st although everything to do with color that's nothing to do with up to date it's just color and uh, it's always be the color the same ideas will always re remain are the same ideas so we have 21 shades and uh, i won't go uh, explain each and every shade i just show you through they they put a, a good content list so they have all this from lady sunset to zero months all the way to rainbow uh, to rainbow word so you can see it uh, the color palette as you can see this is a solid collection 21 colors but something that clicked uh, in my mind in, is this combination of uh, orange and green so it's all about nature and uh, the fruit orange it really came to my mind uh, because this is a kind of orange color that I'm working with and here we have the nature combined with this orange color and they put together a very nice image you can see it is it is teal and uh, have some greenish leaves and there is this this cloth they put there and I think this was stunning because my eyes drawn to such kind of um, images I can see the base, the base color here is the orange and then the teal color and then the, the orange, the, the teal color go more into dark, dark colors. And then there is the orange that goes all the way from uh, the, the, that orange skin all the way to the light that I, I call the juice, the juice color. So from there, the next thing that you do, which is zoom back and create a snippet of, of this image so that you can reuse it. So I quickly do that. I'm using Windows, so I will do Windows key, Shift and S. Here it is. So the screen, and that's, I've captured the screenshot. I pick it from my notification. So here, uh, it launches and save it to my desktop. 
So I, I name it color insp inspiration insp. Uh, and there it is ready for uh, for me to start using. Next step is to extract these colors uh, and start using them. So I go to Figma. So I've already fired Figma. So it is here. And I, I go to the plus icon. I come back, uh, I, I will come back to this, um, to this preview colors uh, section. First, let's create a working area, more like a Figma design page. So I go, I click the plus icon there, and then there is a new design file. I create one. So Figma is creating it. So let's wait for it to load the, the page. The page has finished loading. Let's name it the talking dev uh, or demo. So because I'm demoing it for you. So that is it. We have, I've remained that I, I, I name it uh, the token dev demo. I already have the token dev version one, the one that I've already created. Now that the page is ready, the next thing I, uh, I go to this one, that is the page section of the Figma. I change it to, I rename it to primary colors or primary color. And then from there, I want to create frame. So I click F, that is the shortcut key. I use one of the defaults here, that is the desktop. I go with 1280 and rename it to primary colors. Just colors, it's fine. So it's 1280 by 832. It doesn't matter the size. All it matters is that you have the frame ready for you, for you to start designing. So the next thing is I usually do is to create a mood board page. So I go back to the pages and click plus and, and create mood, mood board. Here it is. So once I've created that page, uh, uh, I, will, I will now bring in or place the image that uh, I snipped from the, from the site so that I can start extracting colors from that uh, from that image. There are several ways of importing images in Figma. I think the, the shortcut is called Shift K. If you want, you want to use a shortcut. If you want to use a manual by moving to the cursor, you go to the objects and then you uh, you click place, place image. That is it. Here it is. I will place it here. Just the default and uh, simply drag it on the page. So here it is. The next thing I have to do is to create a, a simple square where this square is where I'll use to, uh, to reference the colors from the image. So I click R and just click on the page. I have a, a perfect square that is 100 by 100 uh, square and then I, I need to create six of them because I will, I want to, extra, to, to extract all six colors from this image. And uh, 20 pixels apart. I hit control D six times or five times. And now I have six, six uh, rectangles. I will name them to primary. Oh, main, main, actually main. That's the right, the right one. I name them to main, and then I begin with the first one. I begin with the dark, uh, the dark color, or the way going to my right. I have six of them. Now uh, I will leave these six here, but I will copy them to my primary colors so that I can start working with those colors that I've extracted there. So I place it here. I in fact, let's but rename them to uh, main colors actually. Main colors or base colors. Let's rename them to base, base colors. I think base color is the right word here. That is it. Now I have base colors. I can go uh, renaming each color by, uh, each rectangle or each square by the exact colors or the exact name because I know they are tills and then the tills have uh, darker shades and then there is orange uh, from uh, real orange colors that the skin orange color and then all the way to the light orange 
that is the, the, the light orange colors to the far right. This is something that you can do. I won't do it now because it is easy to do it. Typically hold control R and then you rename it. Next step once I've done that is to start is to start creating palettes. And uh, creating palettes is easy. So I will, uh, uh, for me, I didn't choose this, the skin color. I went to the light orange. And the reason that I went to the right, to the light orange is that uh, it comes out well when it comes to contrast, especially when using it against the till, the, the, the till, the till, uh, the dark till we have here. It pops out and it doesn't have contrast issues. In fact, we test it and you see how it goes. So let's go down into duplicating our colors. So I'm using it. I'm holding Alt down and duplicating the first that that uh, the, the the sixth color that is uh, the light orange. So it is here. It's also named base color. I will rename it to primary pre primary slash main. And you will see why we do that. The next thing that you have to do is to uh, to make a, a decision. So this is how you start thinking about your color and the role that they will be playing when it comes to your design. This is how I do it. Uh, we have like six base, base colors. Uh, that is, you have the main color. And then the second one that you have, you have the, surf the surface color. Surface color usually leads to us uh, white. In fact, you can think of uh, off, off white. And then we need a, a border color. And then the next one that we need, we need color for hover. And then we'll need color for when you uh, something that is pressed. We need to show that draw. When someone press a button, we need to see uh, maybe the button change. Also, the, the, the other one is um, focus. Uh, focus is uh, also something else that we usually have. Most of the time, the buttons have outlines. This is usually for accessibility so that someone can see that uh, the button or something that have, have been pressed or have these states, the states change and can, people can see visually what they are doing. Now that one is, is, is set aside. So let's duplicate the six colors. But before we do that, I usually have uh, a little bit of variation because uh, sometimes I may need more of a, a surface color that is completely off-white that is so close to white. And then I need a surface color that is have a lot more of tint to it. And then when it comes to dark color, I will need a, a, a dark color with more of the tint and then almost a dark color that leans toward charcoal. That's my sweet spot. So let's do it. Uh, for now, uh, that one, if you made your calculation, you will have around nine colors in this uh, orange design. So let me uh, do it for, for you. You click the, the orange color that I've already renamed to primary main. And uh, I like to do it 20 pixels apart. And then uh, control D like eight times. Uh, three, six, eight, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine. Uh, from the left, all the way, all of them are, are named primary main. So I will rename uh, the second one to control R and rename it to surface slash lightest. Okay. So I move, I move all through the nine color, renaming them. So let me quickly go, go, go into work. Gone ahead and, and uh, renamed all my, my, my squares, each, uh, each and every one. That is from, uh, from main all the way to pressed. You can see them here. So that's how I rename or how I go with creating palettes. Uh, as you can see, it's not a must that you create all this variation of dark and darkest or surface light and lightest. So typically that's how I, 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 I try to do it. You can go with just surface and then uh, with just dark. You'll see that the till version will have a different approach, 
but th this is a, a general guideline. Before we go into creating these different colors using Figma plugin, I'm going to share with you the three plugins that we are going to use in this design. The first thing you do, you go to your homepage. I've already done search for the chroma colors. This is the first uh, plugin that you, you will need. If by any case you fall into this, into this page, so what you need to do is to, to, to search. Uh, for here, I was hoping that I would get the, the pr uh, plugin section, but I didn't. So what I do, I search like chroma colors or chroma, and here it is, chroma colors. That is the first one. The second one that I will use in this project is the plugin going by contrast. This one will, try, will help us test the, the contrast of the design, whether it is working. So it is this one by Mark. Oh yeah, my namesake, but he has a double A. So here it is, this is the contrast plugin that we'll be using. And the next one is tints and shades. It is here by this guy. So let's load. So what you do, you click try it, and then you go to the plugin section. Typically it will be here, and then the plugins, and here they will be, and then you run the plugin that you, you want to use. So I have several that have been installed in my Figma so far, and uh, one of them is Tints, and uh, that is Contrast, and then the Chroma. So from there, the next step is now generating these Tints. So what you usually need to do is that you need to select the, the first or the base color, and then you, you run the Tints and Shades plugin. I've selected here, and then I press Control forward slash, and then type uh, chroma, tints, tints and shade. So here is our guy that the, the plugin has popped up and then simply click generate colors. That's all you need. Now you have all your colors here uh, with different shades, the 11 of them. So I simply extend my, my frame is actually smaller so that it can be able to fit all 11 of them. So typically what I did with this design, for my hover and press color, I went more with the exact the color that I already have because that's how I felt that this design, the direction of this design should go. And then I created these two separate dark colors in case I need them. So this is not the color that I may need to use, but probably somewhere along the way when I'm trying to, I'm testing design, I'm working with design, I may need the, the, the dark color of this orange color. First thing I do is that uh, let's go to that color that is hover. Hover, I will use my eyedropper and select this orange. Yeah, that's selected. And then I go to the pressed one. Yeah, and I choose that one. So it seems mine have gone out of al alignment. So I will uh, realign it. The next thing is that uh, I, I select the, the surface colors. So here it is. I go to the, the first one. Then still I use the same first rectangle to select my surface co color. And then for the border colors, I use the second uh, rectangle. That's the one that we, sh we generated from tints and shades. And then for the dark one, I'm going to use the seventh color from this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've already selected the seventh, the seventh rectangle, and then I pick another one from the ninth. Maybe I can even go to the tenth one or even one, doesn't matter, because I still tune it. And then the last one is the, the focus color. Typically the focus color is more of a variation or more of a transparency, this transparent color of uh, the main color. So here I would choose 20%. So you go to the fields and change that one from 100% to 20%. That's what I've done. And now you have more like a baseline where you can start working with. Before I do anything, because that is the next step with these shades that I've already uh, selected here, the, the first thing I want to do is to tweak the dark colors and then the surface colors. So I will select the surface color that is the lightest and then go to the fill there and then I will pop the color picker there and then I will change from hex to HSB that is hue, saturation and brightness. I won't touch anything to do with the 
you because that's it's not something that I want to change because the the hue I've already cho I've already selected my hue. If you select the hue color and go there, it is that seven. That's the hue that you are working with. So I won't change it. But what I want to to play with here is the saturation here. First, the saturation is up to 16. I want to be a little bit desaturated because as you know, I'm moving towards white. So what I need to do is change it to around, uh, let's see if four works. That's uh, almost extreme uh, and I will still go extreme. Yeah, that one is okay. Now that one color is fine. That's super off white, but still have that uh, tint. That is the orange tint. And then I will select the lightest one. That one is around uh, 16 also. I'll have it that go to around eight and see how it works out. Yeah, the tint, that one works fine. Now the next thing I go to the dark colors. That's where we'll be working with the darkest, the darkest colors. So I go with the dark, just that's dark one. So when it comes to dark, I'm working with, uh, probably here I'm looking at the bright, the brightness here, the brightness is around 83. So with 83, I want to go to less bright. So if it is less, le less bright, I'm going to go with around 60. Let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit dark. Still you've, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that darkness inside there. And, uh, maybe a little bit of it. Let's go 50 and see. Yeah, that dark is fine. I'll go with that darkness for the dark one. And then I go to the darkest and uh, let me see how darkest look like. Here I want to lean toward um, charcoal and I know the charcoal color is around here center and I still want the orange tint still in that color. So I, I will, uh, this time I'll drag uh, and yeah, I've, I've dragged it around there. This is around 16. This is a little bit of color. It's, it has changed my my hue. I've changed it to that seven. And um, yeah, that's 16. Let's do 15 there. Mm -hmm. And uh, saturation 53. Let's go with 50 maybe. Uh, okay. I think that's fine, or maybe Sigisti. Yeah, that pushes towards the end. So I've, I have my, 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 my darkest color selected. That is for my orange. So I feel this design is ready to test. I've noticed this video was taken uh, to a new twist. That is, I had more content than, uh, than I had uh, anticipated. That means that we are going to have a part three of this uh, series on color branding so that means that we are going to have that part three so look forward to it and i also look forward for that video to come out so i'm still uh, producing it generally if you have not subscribed to this channel uh, like this video uh, share and leave your comment i really appreciate that because this content is for people like you so thank you so much See you in that video. It will be somewhere here. All the best.